Hello again. Thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about a film I highly recommend for this time of year to give Thanksgiving. It is November, and that is the film Miami Connection. Now, why did I come to this particular film with regards to a time of the year where we should at least give some glancing thought as to what we should be thankful for. There are a few universals, of course, for what we should be thankful for. You should be thankful for your family, thankful for your friends, and thankful for what you have. You know, count your blessings, what have you. And this film does, in its own way, focus on the virtue of friendship. And the film focuses primarily on a college rock band Dragon Sound. Dragon Sound, how do you even begin to describe them? Well, they're friends, probably for eternity, through loyalty and honesty. They will stick together through thick and thin. They're friends forever, and they will undoubtedly be together. They're on top because they play to win. Dragon Sound is a college band that... Just having the job of being uh, like the opening act for this one nightclub, unfortunately, they get in, you know, they get in bad with a rival band. So this rival band decides to marshal a small army of about 30 or 40 guys to, you know, uh, twist their arm and say, hey, don't take our nightclub Miami because I don't know if you all know this there's only one nightclub in Miami it's very famous for that it's a very famous city for only having one nightclub and and if you're a musical group and you don't have uh, access to that you know to that gig to that one nightclub in Miami then I mean that's that's just it that's it for you you're done so it's very very important to protect your music gig turf and anyways like i said they get this small army to you know twist their arm maybe break their legs say hey you need to get out of town you know because like we're the only ones that can play at this nightclub and dragon sound which is a group of about five guys i say about because even though the cast is supposed to represent the group sometimes they're there sometimes they're not i'll get back to that in a little bit but these group of five guys are all black belts in Taekwondo. All black belts in Taekwondo. They're just a group of honest young people going to college, uh, you know, making their way uh, with a burgeoning musical career and, you know, teaching Taekwondo. I say teaching Taekwondo because that is uh, the director of this film. That was his primary career before making the movie. Anyway, but still, they're just, they're just a nice you know, group of orphans that, you know, just banded together to make a band, you know, to just spread message about, you know, being friends and, and, you know, down with ninjas. I uh, yeah, mixed feelings about that being a movie ninja myself, but, you know, <laughs> they are against the ninja. Um, and that's all they want to do. They just want to go to school. They want to play their music teach and learn Taekwondo and just, you know, just live a positive lifestyle. That's, that's all they want. But as I mentioned, this rival gang, they just can't have that. They lost their, they lost their club gig thanks to Dragon Sound. So unfortunately, after they have their butts handed to them by Dragon Sound because they're all black belts in Taekwondo, they enlist, they enlist the services of a local street gang. Well, that goes about the same. And finally, finally, it escalates to the point where the Miami Ninja need to be recruited in order to bring down Dragon Sound. Okay, so watch it. Watch this film. It's not so much of a review as it is a strong, strong recommendation. Now, this is a film that first came to my attention a few years ago, mostly by accident. Unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, I, ha I didn't know about it earlier. Uh, this is a film that is 
now famously like well known because it's it's campy. It's campy. The production quality is not really top notch. However, it does have a lot of like ironic comedy. It does have a lot of good action scenes. So it so it does have that. It has a lot of fun ideas in it. And I mean, it's 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 a good watch. You know, for you, your buddies, to just like to watch and just have a good time with it. Uh, there's a few uh, that like almost every every critic on YouTube and beyond has like seen it and talked about it. It's very well known now. Uh, for many years, it was actually uh, obscure because the uh, director Y.K. Kim. Uh, the director Y.K. Kim went through a lot for this film, y'all. This was not like. This was not a Tommy Wiseau uh, endeavor to where I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make this movie and it's gonna make me rich and famous and then I can just you know I I can just lavish in that lifestyle. Y.K. Kim for him making this film was actually fairly traumatic. Uh, when I say that, this was uh, a young man who moved to the United States. Um, you know, he was he was a newlywed. He was a young father when when he when he made this, and you know he wanted to use uh, you know the platform of cinema as a means to kind of spread awareness about the positives of learning martial arts, particularly taekwondo. And ten days, and 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 you can look up. You know these uh, like these these documentaries or these interviews where Grandmaster now Grandmaster Y.K. Kim uh, has said ten days ten days into the production of this film, he it drove him to bankruptcy. Unfortunately, this film was not particularly well received when it was uh, when it first premiered. It was it it was raked across the coals. It was hacked by every single critic, uh, every negative possible review of it was was written that could, like, properly be entered into, you know, these things called newspapers from back in the day. And they all had just nothing but negativity to, to talk about it. Uh, this was a film that did take an extensive period of time for Grandmaster Kim to finance, uh, Grandmaster Kim to... To have any kind of cast, he actually uh, pulled from some of his uh, from some of his students who volunteered to be in the movie. This was a film that, as I mentioned, there was a positive intention, you know, uh, the the positivity about learning martial arts, learning Taekwondo, um, and having strong friendship. And let me tell you, like the friendship is a little bit like, of course, there's a little bit of hyperbole. But if you can count on your friends to protect you from motorcycle ninja, those are some good friends. Keep them around. Uh, this is a movie with a lot. It has it has a lot of heart. It has more heart than it does really anything else. But something that you also have to bear in mind is that you know then Master YK Kim. Uh, he went into this whole process not knowing a thing about uh, movie making, and let's let's be honest with ourselves here, okay? Before we, you know, before we judge this film like too harshly, you know, when you were, you know, first out on your own, did you know how to pay your bills? Did you know how to cook for yourself? Did you know how to do your laundry? You know, everything is most difficult. And this is what I remember first from my. Uh, time studying Taekwondo, particularly, is that, you know, the black belt is when you have officially obtained that level of skill to where you can become a greater student. A lot of people are confused. They believe, oh, that's, that's the master level. No, not really. The master, I believe the standard is fourth don. I could be wrong. It might be fifth. Uh, I'm not uh, entirely sure what the standards like are. Um, but fourth to fifth don master. But when you have a black belt, that means you have obtained a level of skill to where you are a well-practiced student and you can now learn even like more. Um, 
But, but what I, I do remember, like one of the first lessons in Taekwondo, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of strength and perseverance to get to the black belt. But it is the white belt, the very first one, that is the hardest. Why, why is it the hardest? Because you're learning everything the first time. When Grandmaster Kim reflected making this movie, it was, it was a long series of mistakes. This was the first film. He, he didn't know anything about making films. And he um, naively uh, went into this, perhaps assuming that it was a much easier process. And he, you know, um, I'm not going to get into the numbers. If you look up interviews with uh, Grandmaster Kim um, and uh, some of the other cast and crew like of the production, the, like, you know, it wasn't like he went into this without resources in the beginning. Um, there was there was a lot of money put into this. Unfortunately, within the first 10 days, all of that money was already spent and he was driven to the point of bankruptcy and it nearly ruined him. But as I mentioned, with all the schlock, with all the camp, there are a lot of positive messages like with this. And with those positive messages, there is an extraordinary amount of violence, so, which in and of itself gives it its most entertaining like value. You actually do see some, some, some competent like martial arts like in this uh, mixed in with a lot of 1980s cliche sort of like crime uh, story tropes. You have like these weird mishmash gangs that what 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 are they, what are they doing? What is their purpose? Why why are they operating the way they're operating? Don't ask questions. It's the eighties. Don't ask questions. The answer is probably cocaine. You know, stupid cocaine. You know, but <laughs> don't don't think about it too much. It is a fun watch. It is a fun watch. Anything that you can watch and have a, just a good time. You know, with family and friends. I say is is a triumph. Is a success. So, Miami Connections, I highly recommend it. The theme is friendship, friendship for eternity, loyalty, honesty. And as I mentioned, this is going to be the first film that I recommend during uh, this November season. And uh, so, uh, have you seen the film? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you did, did, did you not enjoy it? I don't know how, like, if you didn't enjoy it, like, please comment Please explain. It's a fun movie. It's a fun watch. So, so anyways, thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Watch. It's it's online. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime. There's, uh, there's a Rift Tracks version of it as well. Uh, Rift Tracks are the guys that did Mystery Science Theater 3000. And however, whatever format you decide to like, you know, like with commentary, without... You know, it's a fun watch. So, once again, thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.